is Munson with Munson Music. I'm going to talk about how you play a song called Over Again by One Direction. And we end up cabling this on second fret to kind of match the recording. We'll walk through a couple things in root position. And we start with these really cool arpeggios of broken chords around an A minor chord. And normally you do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second fret, and third finger on the G string second fret. And if you strum all those together, all the sad sounds of A minor. Now, now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger and making that an A sus2. We're adding in the pinky on the B third for an A suspended chord, kind of saying some stuff around A minor. Or you may dig on lifting off the third finger, making that an A minor seven. We're adding in the pinky on the high E third for an A minor seven. Or you may dig on an A seven sus, doing first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, and the pinky on the high E third. Now we're going to have an A minor. And then from the A minor, we'd be going to an F major. I normally do this as a first fret bar, and we'll talk about some easy ways out here too. Second finger on the G second, third finger on the A third, pinky on the D third. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an F major chord and it sounds really happy. Now a good substitute for that if you're just starting out is an F major seven, where you do first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the G second fret, and third finger on the D third fret. And if you strum the D string of the high E string, it sounds like an F major seven that sounds really groovy happy. Now you may also dig on an F major thirteen where you do first finger on the G second, second finger on the D third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for your F major. And then from the F we'd be going to a C major chord. And normally you do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second, third finger on the A third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, ah, oh, the beautiful sounds of C major. Now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger and making that a C major seven. Or you could add in the pinky on the B string third for C major nine, kind of say some stuff around that chord. Or another way to play C major nine is to do first finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for the C major. And then from the C major, we'd be going to a G major chord. Normally you do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the low E third, and third finger on the high E third. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and sounds really happy. You may also dig on putting the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, slightly more powerful G. And so through that part, actually, you could kind of work almost an eight down count on the chords, kind of an A, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, F, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, C, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G. So I'm adding kind of a little bit of muting and kind of making that a little sneaky <laughs> through the intro. So you may want to kind of play around with that, especially if you're just starting out, or you may dig on a strum pattern. One of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the A minor and just tried that a lot. You have down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So we tried that through our main progression. And A minor. Of times on that first down of the down down up up down up you're throwing a bass note for the chord so on the a minor you'd have the a for the bass on the f bar you'd have louis for the bass on the f major seven you'd have the d for the bass on the c you'd have the a for the bass and on the g you normally have the louis for the bass but you may want to use the a string for the bass and that makes it something called g slash b or g major but now you're putting a b note in the bass so g slash b is an a bass arpeggios actually through that verse and what I mean by arpeggio, arpeggio means broken chord and actually what, what I was really digging on is kind of a finger style deal for this and normally what you do with, with the fingers is thumb kind of becomes your bass player for the D and the A and the E string and you could kind of line your fingers up index on the G string middle finger on the B string ring finger on the high E string and if you're just starting out for this a really really easy way to kind of get used to this is just doing thumb index middle ring so kind of a bass and G, B, E idea. Bass index middle ring or bass G, B, E. So you can 
gonna do that twice on each chord. I'm gonna A minor, the F, the C, and then the G slash B. And actually, I was kind of abbreviating the G slash B to just second fret on the A, and then third fret on the B string, and just leaving the open E string. So if you kind of dig on that, it's kind of a 2 0 3 0 on that arpeggio. So you'd have an A minor. B, A minor, and C, G slash B. Now in the recording, what it really kind of sounds like though is that you do the thumb index and then the middle and the ring at the same time on the E and B. And then you can do that again. And then we do just the thumb index at the end. So it's kind of thumb index middle ring together. Thumb index middle ring together index kind of becomes our main arpeggio. So we just want to try it a lot on the A minor. And through the progression that way you'd have the A minor, F, C, G slash B, A minor, F, C, G slash B. Although you were hear this cool little lick on, on the F chord. So you could go thumb, index, middle ring, thumb, index, middle ring, thumb, index for the A minor. But on the F, if you kind of take the F major 7 and take your first finger and kind of bar over the E and B strings, after that first few times, you may want to kind of take the high E string and work a pull off to the open E. Might be kind of a cool lick to kind of throw in on the F chord. Have the C and the G slash B. So you kind of dig on that and you really want to kind of match the recording of thing that's pretty close. So you got the A minor, F, pull off C, G slash B, A minor, F, C, G slash B. And then from there we'd be repeating that through our first verse and our first chorus. But in the second verse, in the second chorus actually, you'll hear this cool little variation where it almost sounds like we start off with the A minor and then the F and then our C, but then we kind of do C for four, one, two, three, four, and then the G for four. So it's almost like the C and the G at the very end is kind of, G has become C and G kind of together in a measure. So A minor, F, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Also, I was kind of digging on a 16th note strum pattern through that progression. And this is a little weird, but what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down. So kind of a one, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. What I mean by that is on the A minor, if you do kind of a down for four, kind of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do a down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And then on the third beat, you do an up on two, down on three. So kind of one, two, three, four. Last beat, you go down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So all together, you got down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. There's a couple ways you could kind of apply that. One easy way if you're just starting out with sixteenths is you could do kind of a down, 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 up, kind of the first half of the pattern. On the A minor C and the F and the C. And then on the very last C and G, you may want to do a down, down, just like what we're doing with the A pattern. Splitting that pattern, this can be very 
pretty cool too. You do the A minor with the down, 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 up, and then go to the F for the up, down, down, up, down, up. And then do the C with the down, 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 up, up, down, and then save that last down, up, down for the G chord. second chorus and then from there we'd be going into our bridge part our bridge starts on the F and then we go to a G and then we go to our A minor chord and then we go to an E minor chord and normally you do this first finger on the A second second finger on the D second and if you strum all those together that sounds an E minor chord that sounds really sad now you may also dig on adding in the third finger on the B third pinky on the high E third kind of working that for your E minor so E minor seven really do that with any of those those patterns you could do the down idea or you can do the down down up up down up e minor e minor or you could work the 16th idea it's kind of long down 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 up on each chord or you could split it e minor down down up e minor up, down down up down up and then from there we're going into our last chorus and then we, there's kind of a bridge return for, for our outro now the weird part is to play along with one direction. Instead of starting on an A minor chord, they're starting on a B minor chord. So play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and you put the capo on 2nd fret, and now your A minor is really a B minor, and your F is really a G, and your C is really a D major, and your G is really an A major chord, and the E minor chord is really an F sharp minor chord. But to take it from the very beginning, you could work just the downs through the intro in that first verse chorus, kind of A minor, Or you could work the down, down, up, up, down, up. Adjustment of that from from the tune, kind of A minor, F, C, G slash B, or you can throw in that F idea, A minor, F, C, G slash B, or if you're digging on the sixteenth idea, I, actually what can be kind of cool if you're digging on that with the basses is you can do kind of a, a, a well you could work just the sixteenth idea, just the down 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 upon each chord. You could do just a bass down, down on each of those chords. C, G, slash B, A minor, F, C, G, slash B. Or you could half the A minor, down, down, up, F, up, bass, down, up, down, up, C, down, down, G, slash B, A minor, F, C, G, slash B. We'd be repeating that through our first verse and our first chorus. And then we kind of ended up with that C, G adjustment for the G chord. So you could do that with the downs, kind of A minor, F, C, C for four, G for four, the down, down, up, up, down, up, minor, F, C, C down, down, up, G, down, up, A minor, F, C, C, G, or you can add basses to See? 
with the 16th idea kind of. A minor, down, down, up, F, down, down, up, C, down, down, up, C, down, up, G. Or you can add basis to that. second verse chorus, then we're going into our bridge part. And you word that with any of those ways. You can word the down idea, or you might dig on the down, down, up, up, down, up. style through that part. Yeah, you could kind of make that adjustment on the C and G too. You could kind of kind of work the, the P thumb index middle ring idea. And this is a little weird thumb index middle ring for the A minor and F. And then do the C and then do another C and then do another G with the thumb index middle ring. So it's a little weird because you're kind of delaying that C chord but if, you, if you're digging on doing the whole thing finger style that might be a cool way to kind of do it. pattern we were talking about. Actually, that would be the weird part, right? You could put the thumb index middle ring on the last two chords to do a bridge. Actually, that would be a cool way to do it. A minor. style ways together. We can mix it up to a minor. C, C, G slash B. So we want to kind of experiment with that too. And then from there then we'll be going into our last chorus. So all the way through that we kind of have that bridge idea. G, style adjustment for that. Kind of an F, G, A minor, and your E minor would have a low E bass. And then G, A minor, A minor, and then G, A minor, E minor, and G. And then you have a big C chord. That's the basics of how you could strum through and finger style through over again by One Direction. So, good luck! <laughs>